Welcome to our study concerning the Word of God. In fact, this entire uh, session, this entire course is going to be geared towards exciting you about studying the Word of God. We not only want to show you how to study the Word of God and to give you some insights into principles about studying the Word of God, but we actually want to get into the Word of God and see it for ourselves. I cannot tell you of anything more exciting than just saturating your entire life in the Word of God to allow God to speak to you through His own Word. See, we really believe that this book right here is alive in its power and in its influence. We believe that somehow it is a living organism. Now, of course, we do not believe that we worship this book. This book is not an idol to us. It's not black ink on white paper. It does not have magical qualities to it. In other words, we don't rub it like a rabbit's foot for good luck. We don't carry it around as if it would bring some kind of luck to our lives just because we have it in our possession. We know that it's the truth that's upon the pages that makes the difference. That it's the reality of the truth that is applied to our lives as the concepts and the principles are, are gleaned and we begin to understand what God is saying to us. We also believe that there is a tremendous linkage between this book, the written word, and the living person of Jesus Christ himself. That he has not spoken these words and then gone off. He is not like Shakespeare who spoke words, wrote words, and then died, and now we read the words that he left. This is not a book that Jesus wrote and then left us and we're reading about what he did and about things that he said. We're not into that kind of thing. What we're discovering is that Jesus is here now. We believe in a resurrected Lord. We believe in a Christ who is alive this moment and that he is not just, has not just written these things in the past through those men that he inspired, but he is literally standing here in this moment. And as we read this book, his lips are parting and we are literally discovering he is speaking to us himself. So you see there's this tremendous linkage between the written word on the one hand and the living word on the other hand. The living word is the living word. We have no problem with that. The written word is the written word. We understand that and we do not get them mixed up. But we also know that somehow the living word has taken all of his power and he's literally dumped it into the written word. And that when we grab a hold of the written word, we grab a hold of the living word. And that when somehow we get into the written word, we are literally getting into the living word himself. And the way to discover Jesus is to discover the book. So we are calling you in this course to come back to the book. It is the foundation for everything that matters to us, for everything that we believe. The basis of our belief is not our experience. How you experience it may be different than the way I experience, but that has nothing to do with the depth of the truth of the Word of God. God it takes, the word of, he takes His Word and applies it to our life in different manners. We understand that. And because circumstances are different and backgrounds are different, applications will vary, but truth is the same. See, we really believe that this book was written to tell us one thing. That when you come to a passage, you discover a truth in that passage. And it's not that when you look at the passage, you get one truth. And when I look at the passage, I get another truth. No, when you look at the passage and you study it correctly, you will get one truth. When I look at that passage and I study that passage, I will get the same truth. Because the basis of that passage is one single truth and God was trying to say one thing in his word. Now again the application may be different. You will take that truth and apply it to your life and it will mean something different to you in application than it may mean to me. But the truth is the same. The truth is always the same. For 2,000 years it has been the same. So every passage has a dynamic truth. How are we going to get that dynamic truth? How are we going to discover that truth? How are we going to get beneath the surface of the Word of God and get into the truth so we will know it for ourselves? That's the purpose of this course. We are again going to be intermixing the idea of preaching and study. See, I really believe that the problem with expositional preaching is not a preaching problem at all. It is a study problem. The reason we do not preach expositionally is because we do not study expositionally. And this, of course, is a call to come back to expositional study. 
That we might come to the Word of God to find out what it says. You see, a radical thing happened in my life when I began to read the Word of God just to find out what it says. That's amazing, isn't it? It's so simple. Hey, you read other material just to find out what it says. Why could you not come to the Word of God and read it just to find out what it says? What does the Word of God say? Oh, I read the Word of God for a lot of other reasons. I read it, of course, to uh, be inspired in my morning devotions. I read it, of course, to prove you wrong when we were arguing about some theological truth. I read it to get up sermons. I read it to get up Sunday school classes and, and present to the, the uh, students what I had found. I read it for all of those different reasons, but it seemed like I never ever came just to read the Word of God to find out what it says. See, I always had my preconceived ideas, the things that I thought. I always had the ideas that I had been taught and I'd pretty well already made up my mind by the time I came to the Word of God. So the Word of God, as I read it, was simply verifying what I already thought. But I never just cleared my mind to come and say, okay, God, what are you saying in your Word? I want to know the truth and I want you to expose it to me. And to allow God literally to begin to unfold His truth to me and to literally change my life through that truth. Of course, that's the key, isn't it? If we really find out what the Word of God has to say, it will radically change our lives. And are we open to change? And will we allow God to alter us from deep within? So in this course, we probably will get carried away and we'll talk about preaching. Now, maybe you're not a preacher. That's okay. Don't be offended by that. When we're talking about preaching, we're really talking about study and you ought to be an expositional studier even if you are not an expositional preacher. Or maybe you are teaching a Sunday school class. You ought to be an expositional teacher as well as an expositional studier. So you see, whether we're talking about preaching, whether we're talking about study, or whether we're talking about Sunday school teaching, it all boils down to the same basic principle of coming back to the Word of God and letting the Word of God expose itself through us as we live, as we teach, as we preach. So we will begin to intermix these terms, teaching, preaching, and study. And so do not be uh, turned off by the fact that we may talk about expositional preaching I would probably slip into that because I'm a preacher and, and that's close to my heart and I just begin to think in those terms, in the terms of sermons and preaching. But it's expositional study that this course is really all about. And we are trusting that in this course we, you will begin to glean the principles for expositional study. You will be e extremely uh, motivated and internal desire will begin to happen in your life as the Spirit of God literally gives you a new taste for the Word of God and you begin to have a desire to study it for yourself and to find out what He has to say to you as it will change your life. Expositional study expositional preaching. Um, several years ago I was reading the history of preaching. It is written by Edwin Dargan and he literally wrote three volumes although he didn't get to finish the last one so somebody else did that for him. But they are three very thick books and they give a history of preaching from the very beginning as it walks through the Old Testament, down through the New Testament, down through the church age, and we see the unfolding of preaching in the church. It has always played a very dominant part in the church. You understand that as we ordain people in the church of the Nazarene, for instance, or in any denomination that you might be a part of, in the Methodist church, in the Lutheran church, that they are ordained to preach. In our mind, there is nothing more sacred than preaching, that is, exposing the Word of God. But how can you expose the Word of God unless you know how to study? So you see, as you begin to study the history of preaching, you begin to see in his book, Dargan's book, The History of Preaching, you begin to see the rise and fall of civilization based upon the kind of preaching that was going on. Every time that there was a rise in expositional preaching, there was a rise in the civilization. Every time expositional preaching faded away, then there was a, a fading of civilization and a moving into the darkness and even into the dark ages. 
In fact, the Dark Ages, as was experienced, can be located because we disobeyed and pushed aside the Word of God. The Word of God became non-essential to us and we no longer investigated it and it was no longer expositional preaching. Now maybe you want to say the Dark Ages came and out of that expositional preaching faded. But it could be very true that expositional preaching faded and the Dark Ages moved in. So could it be that based upon expositional study, our society rises or falls based upon how we get into the Word of God? Right in the middle of the second volume, or maybe it was the first one, there is this powerful, powerful statement that our brother made. Uh, his name again is Edwin Dargan. Here is what he said. What an overwhelming statement. He's expressing what might be happening in our age. You see, when we basically just copy each other, then we never discover the truth from the heart of God. The call is that we would come back to the book and we would be begin to investigate the book, which is literally the exposing of the heart of God. And as we investigate the book, God would begin to reveal to us the wonder of who He is and freshness would begin to take place. And in preaching and in teaching, we would begin to know the power of God again flowing from the book through us. See, I'm absolutely convinced that the anointing of God is not upon a man. I know that we often pray that God would anoint the preacher. And as a preacher, we often pray, Oh God, anoint my life today. And there is a sense in which that, which that takes place. But I believe that the reality of truth is that God has anointed His book. And anyone who will get into the book will know the anointing. That the anointing of God is not upon a man, it's upon the truth of the Word. And when you saturate yourself in the Word, when the Word begins to be alive within you and begins to move through you, when the Word begins to permeate your mind and your inward heart and begins to flow through you, when revelation from the Word begins to take place and exposes itself through your life, then the anointing of God is flowing out of you. Only it isn't you, you see. It's the Word of God that you have gotten into because the Word of God is where the anointing is. So I want to call you back to the book. I want to call you to get underneath its pages. I want to call you to saturate in the book. I want to call you to literally let your life be filled with it. I want to call you moment by moment, day by day, literally to get involved in the Word of God and let it shape you and let it mold you until it becomes your life. Oh, the Word of God. Expose, exposing the Word of God through your life. Expositional study. Expositional preaching. Expositional teaching. Now, maybe you want to ask, what is this expositional teaching that you're talking about or preaching or study? What is it exactly? Perhaps that's a new term to you, and the term is really very, very simple. There would be several ways we could attack this word and begin to try to explain it so that we could all understand it. Let's begin by, first of all, talking in terms of what it is not. Now, some people have said, well, that's just your style. That's the way you do it. Therefore, it's your style, but there are other legitimate ways. So, therefore, it all depends on your personality and how you like to do it. But I want to propose to you that expositional study and preaching is not a style. Now, we understand there is style in study, and there are certain styles in preaching. Uh, for instance, a preacher may wave his hands a lot 
And that certainly is a style. That's the way he does it. Somebody else may not wave their hands at all. Uh, another person when he preaches he may get out from behind the pulpit and run up and down the aisles and he may do all kinds of things in terms of, of drama and, and exposing those kinds of things through uh, the word of God through those kinds of, of activities but you see that's, that's a style that's not expositional study. When we're talking about expositional study, we're not talking about a style or a method or a means by which you especially do it. A technique that you particularly use that seems to fit your personality. Whether you sit in a chair or whether you stand behind a desk. Just exactly how you do it or whether you lay in your bed while you read. Uh, see, none of those things matter to us. The, all of those things have to do with style. And what we're trying to do in this course is not teach you a style. Hey, we want you to be who you are. We want God to express himself through your personality. God made you especially the way you are. We believe you have his fingerprints all over you. And that God shaped you and built you unlike anybody who's ever been. Therefore, God will expose his word through you in a different way and in a different style than he would through me. So nobody's advocating that you must preach like I do or that I have to preach like you do or that one style is, uh, is necessary and another style is not. But when we're dealing with expositional preaching and expositional study. We are not dealing with a style, a technique, a means by which you do it. The method may change. The method may vary. The way we express it will be, a, it will be in a variety of ways dealing with different personalities. But what we're talking about here is a fundamental. What we're talking about here must be the same in all of us. Expositional study, getting into the Word of God, saturating, seeing it, allowing the Word of God to spill through us is not up for grabs. That's not a style. So we're coming back to a fundamental biblical truth that must grip us. We're coming back to the word of God must be that which is our life. We're coming back to the fact that this very essence of the word of God, this living organism, this extension of Jesus himself must be our only voice, must be our only words, must be our only expression. How we express it, how it takes place will vary with personalities, but it must be the fundamental. We must preach the book. We must study the book. It must be our life. It must become the fundamental of all things things within us. So, first of all, I'm trying to say to you that in defining expositional preaching, if you go to the preaching books, for instance, uh, in most of our schools, you will discover there is a whole list of the various kinds of preaching. And often we are encouraged that you should not use the same kind of preaching every time. In other words, give your people in, uh, from the pulpit a variety uh, of kinds of preaching. That one Sunday you'll want to use one kind of approach and another Sunday you'll want to use another kind of approach and all of that's very fine and good. But I want to propose to you that expositional preaching is not a kind of preaching or a kind of study. For instance, in the preaching books, you will begin to realize that they talk about uh, topical preaching as one kind of preaching. There, of course, is narrative preaching, which is another kind of preaching. Um, there is a textual preaching, which is another kind of preaching. So all of these are kinds and the list goes on and on. For instance, topical preaching is very exciting. It means that when you do this kind of preaching, you basically are taking a topic and you are uh, preaching on that topic and giving insight and instruction uh, on that topic. But you see, what we basically mean usually in our minds when we say topical preaching is that, for instance, I want to get up a sermon on uh, faith, we'll say. So I go to my concordance and I look up all the places that the word faith is used in the New Testament or Old Testament. And from there, I, I pick out three or four key verses that give some neat ideas. And I put together some illustrations and I have a little introduction. And then I point one will be one verse and that will give some insight into faith. And point two will give another verse and that will be another kind of uh, a point 
for the sermon. And then number three will be another point, which will be another verse. And, and I kind of uh, uh, preach on this topic of faith. I want to propose to you that is not expositional preaching. And that is not what we're talking about. In fact, I'm not sure you call that preaching at all. That is using and abusing the Word of God. That's twisting it to get what we want. That's going to it and adapting it to what we wanted to say anyhow. In other words, we already had what we wanted to say and we just went to the Word of God to get up some scriptures to verify what we really wanted to tell our people anyhow. I'm proposing to you that is not expositional preaching nor expositional study. There's nothing wrong with preaching on the topic of faith that's good and right and proper. But again, the way you do it is very, very important. We're not against topical preaching. In fact, I don't know how you could preach without preaching on a topic. Because about any time you preach, you're preaching on some kind of subject. For the Word of God is filled with the subjects that God wants us to know about. So we're not against topical preaching. But if you wanted to preach on faith, why wouldn't you go to Hebrews chapter 11, for instance? The whole chapter is on faith. And just soak in that chapter and get into that chapter and allow out of that chapter the message to begin to produce itself. So you wouldn't be going to a variety of scriptures, pulling out this one, pulling out that one, and proving what you want to say. No, you'd be coming to the Word of God, and you'd be allowing the Word of God to produce its own message from the reality of its truth. So you'd preach topically, but you would do an expositional sermon on a topic. So we're not against topical preaching. We're against topical preaching that is not expositional. Now, narrative preaching is really exciting because what it basically tells you is that you tell a narrative or a story. And we really like to do this in the Old Testament because it's easy. You go back to the Old Testament and you read these exciting stories and as you relate these stories in kind of a drama form, you can begin to pull out this idea and make a little point there and make a little point there and make a little point there and it all comes from this tremendous story that you've read. Now that's narrative preaching. But you see, we're not against na uh, narrative preaching, telling the story, getting preaching from the Old Testament on the great stories like Joseph or Noah or Moses. We're not against that. The problem is, why did the author put this in here? What was the purpose of its writing? What was the historical setting? What was the cultural involvement? All of the kinds of things that, that are very essential in study become important at this point. So we must get into the passage and find out what the essence of it, what the author was trying to say. See, you telling a story and giving a few points here and there is not what expositional preaching is all about. It's you coming and getting into the story until the story and the Word of God begins to, begins to produce in you the reality of why the author wrote it, what the historical setting is, and what the real point was for their day. Then you can apply it to our day. So we're not against narrative preaching. We're not against textual preaching. Textual preaching means you take one verse and you preach on that one verse. Hey, we're not against that. But see, what we mean by textual preaching usually is that the preacher stands up and says, my text for this morning is, and then reads a verse, and then you never hear of that verse again, and there's no explanation of what that verse was, and it was just like that verse kind of introduced the subject, but then you don't know anything about that verse, and you don't know what was before that verse and what was after that verse, and what the real impact of the verse was, it was just kind of an excuse for the preacher to say what he wanted to say anyhow. See, that's not expositional preaching. Expositional preaching is allowing the text, oh, saturating in it, letting it get into you until you begin to see it, going before that text and going after that text until you begin to see where it came from and where it's going to and you see it in its context until you get a handle on that and it begins to flow and you begin to let the Word of God produce its sermon out of that text. So basically we're saying we're not getting up our ideas and coming to the Word of God. We are coming to the Word of God that God might give us His idea as it begins to flow right out of the Word as He gives it to us. Expositional preaching. Often we've gotten into allegories. I know the Apostle Paul used an allegory. For instance, he talked about Abraham and Sarah as an allegory. He talked about the Old Testament promised land as an allegory. And often we have felt like we were on that plane and we could do that too. 
but I've never felt like I was adequate for that. Allegory means you just make things up. And it's never proper just to make things up. You read something in the Old Testament and you just apply it the way you want to. You just make it up. For instance, I heard a radio preacher who was talking about creation. And as he was discussing creation, he, had, he made an allegory from it. He talked about how the sun was uh, God the Father himself from which all light comes. The moon was Jesus, of course, who was a reflection of the Father. And the stars were Christians. Oh, he had the earth. It meant something. And rain meant something. And he went on and on and on. And if you'd ask him, do you study the Bible? He said, oh, yes, I'm deep into the Word of God. But the truth of the matter is he was using and abusing the Word of God for his own ends. See, that is not what we're talking about. Allegory, we're not going to make things up. What does the Word of God say and how does it apply to my life? What is God's truth for me from this passage? That's what we're after. It's not Bible study. In other words, we're not talking about being an information dump. We're not talking about uh, just gleaning truths and going on a, a, a missionary trip with uh, the Apostle Paul and showing on a map where he was and what he did and how it came out. See, that's not, no, we're talking concepts. We're talking gleaning the depth of truth. We're talking about getting a hold of principles that begin to shape the interior of your life. We're talking about getting into the Word of God until the great concept of that passage begins to be alive in and through you. Expositional preaching, expositional study, what a wonder it is. The Word of God will forever change your life if you give it a chance. So we're going to be calling you to get into the Word of God. Now in this session we've discussed what it is not. It is not a style. It's not a kind of preaching. It certainly is not allegory. And it's not just Bible study that we're after. Just getting information. We are after the heart of God as exposed in His Word. We're going to be discussing this more and more in the coming sessions. Now it's time for you to go and do your own study. Thank you.